Okay, now we're back and we're going to start talking about collections. So what I need to do is I need to have some way of starting to put these guys into collections. So I'm going to come over here and click on the collections tab. And now you can see that I have one collection already. And this was uh, Jacob Chan is a former evening student and all that kind of stuff. So I just created the folder and put some stuff in there dealing with what he had done for the uh, High Park assignment that we did in our class once. I think I was going to create a PDF tutorial or something along that line. Anyways, so I have one collection already and it may or may not actually function because it may have something to do with the images that are sitting on that external drive. So I'm not even going to click on that. But down at the bottom here, we have two little folder icons, and those are the little, anyways, it doesn't matter, you can see them. And one of them has a plus sign, and the other one has a cog wheel. The first one is creating a new collection. The second one is creating a smart collection, and I'll get into that a little bit later. First of all, what I want to do is I want to create a new collection, so I click on this, and now I get the opportunity to give this collection a name. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this A-L-A-S-K-A, Alaska. Alaska Cruise. Ah, fair enough. Hit the enter key. Because of the alphabet ascending, descending order, we end up with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to my raw files here. And I want to take all of these guys and put them in that collection over there. So click on the first one, Command A, to select them all. And then all I'm going to do is with my cursor, click, hold, and drag. And when I start to drag, you're going to see that little multiple image thing here and I'm just going to come over here and when the yellow lines on top and bottom of the collection you want and you see the plus sign if that all shows up and appears then you just release your mouse and now it says that I have seven images in that collection. They're still in their original folder so it's kind of like a reference that goes into that collection. So now I'm going to come back over to this guy, click once on this, command A to select those guys, click and drag down and then come over here and once I'm in that right place I'll release. I can't tell you how important that is because if you're in too much of a rush you may end up putting your images in the incorrect folder. As I'm sure it's happened many times to you, it's happened a couple of times to me. Alright, so there we go, there's that one. And now I come over to this and here's a singleton and we just come over and put that in there. So now I could come in and check all these guys out individually or I can actually just come over here to my Alaskan collection. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand this a little bit and then we can start to actually let me expand it a little bit more so we can get a better idea of what's going on with these images and maybe I'll just make them all a little bit smaller by dragging this little bar down here. There we go. So now what I want to do is I want to get you guys used to and introduced to star rating your images and possibly using the colored labels to indicate what you want to do after you're finished in Camera Raw. In other words, you might want to use a colored label to indicate that you don't need to do anything else. These images out of Camera Raw, everything that you are able to do and enhance and fix your image, you are able to do in Camera Raw and it's good to go. Give that a colored label. So you can actually ignore those ones and now start looking at the next colored label, which would mean that you might want to do some retouching. And then another colored label could be specific retouching for models' faces or brides' faces or something along those lines. And another one could be that you want to, another color could be a, a set aside for possibly watermarking your images when you put them up on the web. You know what I mean? So we have a number of things. Now, first of all, if we go under the label menu, we'll see that we have ratings. And there's star ratings come in here, and then we have the label options, which are different things. So I've renamed my labels, and you can rename yours, and I'll show you how to do that very shortly. But I've renamed mine to Retouch, Garbage, Before, After Images, Images for Course, Photo Lab. You can rename them at any time and call them whatever it is that you want to. I just randomly created some names so you can see that I changed them. You want to see where you can change those names. You go under Bridge and you go to the Preferences, Command K. And in that resulting dialog box, 
if it ever shows up. Oh, come on. There you go. And we click on in the category section, we click on labels and then you can come in and rename these to whatever it is that you want. Notice that the purple color does not have a keyboard shortcut. Then that's because you can't do command 10 and you end up doing either command one or a zero and you'd be doing something totally different. So anyways, that's where I go in and change those things. So now if we go back under here, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five stars. We have keyboard shortcuts for everything and one star is command one, command two, command three. And then as you can see that we've got different six, seven, eight, nine, and this one is a specific one where we have to come to the menu system. I'd like you to get used to using the command or control one, two, three as opposed to coming up here, selecting an image, coming over here, choosing that, go down, come up and all that kind of stuff. All right, it's really, really easy. And I think it's a very good idea to get involved in doing your star rating at a minimum. So now with star rating at a minimum going on, what we need to do is think about the quality of your images and try not to give any image a star rating higher than three. And my reasoning for this, because everybody wants to go five. Why? Because five's the top. Yay! All right, never mind that stuff. So what I'm getting at is if you are working today on your images and you say, wow, this one's amazing. And it, you know, in my mind it is. Then I would give it a five-star rating. And then in five years from now, when I've become a much better photographer and much more discerning in choosing which images are really good and which ones aren't, I may come back and take a look at this image and go, you know, it is nice, but it's not really worth five stars. So what I'm saying is in the beginning, give your images a one, two or three star rating and then allow yourself some room to grow over the next five to 10 years and then possibly go in, in another two or three years, say, okay, now it's time to move up to the four star rating and then, and then the five star rating. You want to have this pyramid structure that you have your one stars at the bottom and then gradually your two stars, three stars, four stars and five stars. And if you had 10 one stars, you know what I'm saying? Or a hundred and then, you know, less and less and less and less and less. And so in other words, your five star actually means something in five years from now. So your three star should mean something at this point in time, your best images. So if I'm going through this, I might want to come in here and say, well, you know, this is, uh, these are all my one stars. They all were one stars when I actually created the collection. So I'm gonna go in here, command A and select them all. And I'm just gonna come down here and choose command one. So now they all have one stars. And this is where I'm starting my collection from because I took these one stars from individual folders, let's assume, and created my collection and said, okay, now these are the ones that I'm gonna use for whatever purpose. So now I have to look through these guys and say, all right, which ones are better than the one stars? So let's look through this and I think I like this one. I'm not sure if I like this one or this one based on, you know, rule of thirds and all this kind of stuff where I've got, uh, well, that's 50%. So that's it. So there you go. So command two. And this one here is definitely better than a one star. This one here is definitely better than a one star. This one is definitely better than a one star. So it's going to get a two. And I like this one. And I like this one. So now I have a number of different stars going on in this collection. And I have one stars and I have two stars. So the question now is how many do I have of each? Well, if I can come over to my filter section over here, we can start seeing that we've got some extra information coming on over here. And over here, you can see that I have 14 images that have one star and I have six that have two stars. So now let's look over here and just kind of quickly go through these once again. And I kind of like that one. So I'm going to give it a two star. You can see my numbers are changing here slightly. And I'm looking at this and saying, okay, let's just come through. There's got a bridge. Got that. I like that one too. So I'm just going to give that one there. Now you can see that I'm changing the way things are going here. So what I want to do now is I want to just quickly take a look at all my one stars. I just click on that and it hides for the time being my two stars. And I'm going, 
I may want that one to be a two star as well. So as soon as I give it a command two, it's actually going to disappear from this viewing. And I come over to here and I click on this guy. When I click on that, I'm showing everything because I'm showing all my one stars and my two stars. If I turn off my one stars, I now have these guys. From these guys, I want to determine which ones are my three stars. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at this one and I'm going to say that one is definitely a three star. It's gone. This one absolutely is a three star. And I like this one a lot, so that one's going to be a three star as well. And then I'm just wondering, I think this one with some enhancements in Camera Raw and Photoshop, I think this one could be a really good image as well. So there's my three stars. So now I have three stars from nine. I have four now that are actually worthy of me spending some extra time. Does this make sense to you guys? So this is what I'm looking for you guys in the assignments that you're getting is I need you to create the star rating system and we're going to get into labeling things in the next video.